Yeah, they do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, is everyone about ready? Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. Welcome to Aspects yep. of Writing. I'm your host, James Kelly, and my co-host is Janet Corsi. The topic of today's show is writing for comedy. And our guests for today's show are Brenna Daly, Ryan Popehauser, Karen Kate Blackwell, and the hilarious comedian, Marty Allen. <laughs> but before we get to our guests, my pal and I would like to read a few fun quips and quotes. And gentlemen, let's just start. I love this first one. People say that money is not the key to happiness, but I always figured if I had enough money, I could buy a key. But Joan, Joan Rivers. Rivers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and Karen? Well, uh, this was by somebody I know really You know this well. person? Yes. Oh. He, he said, a study of economics usually reveals that the best time to buy anything is last year. And guess who said that? Hmm. Smarty Britches himself sitting next to me. Marty Allen? Marty no Allen. Way. No way. <laughs> and, and you wouldn't know when it's a good time to buy anything. <laughs> You just buy. You don't care. <laughs> I just buy. Yeah, yeah, And I'll let you get the next one, too, Karen. Oh, okay. Marty, you don't want to read the next one? I don't read anything. <laughs> oh, okay. Just ask me the question. <laughs> All right. You, you, here's what you said. You said, I love people and entertaining. The fact that I can still do it and it's with my wife is phenomenal. I want to reach 95 years. Well, honey. You, I think you I made it. Whoa. You're 95 and a half. <laughs> 95 and a half. All right. So you achieved it. In four days. (laughs) Four days. (laughs) All right. See, when you're a little kid, you count the days. I what? When you're a (laughs) little... When you're... Here, let somebody else talk. (laughs) Ryan? (laughs) All right. My quote is, I'm glad I'm a comedian. Otherwise, my life would just be a series of undocumented low points. That's my right. name. All right. <laughs> and Brenna. This one is also from Joan Rivers, and she says, I told my mother-in-law that my house was her house, and she said, get the hell off my property. <laughs> 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 All right. All right. Comedian and native New Yorker Elaine Boozler is quoted as having said, I have six locks on my door all in a row. When I go out, I lock every other one. I figure no matter how long somebody stands there picking the locks, they're always locking three. <laughs> Love it. Think about it. Well, I like that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if you are just tuning in, you're listening to Aspects of Writing with me, your host, James Kelly, and my co-host is Janet Corsi. Our guests are Brenna Daly, Ryan Popalser, Karen Kate Blackwell, and the legendary Marty Allen. The topic of today's show is writing for comedy, and our first guest is the beautiful and tal- talented Karen Kate Blackwell. From the whimsical has a cat to the more serious I pray before, Karen has been a sanctus for several decades. But before she headlined showrooms everywhere from New York to Chicago and Los Angeles, or her adopted home in Las Vegas, where she opened for the likes of Wayne Newton, Karen grew up on a farm near Ellisville, Mississippi. At 18, she decided it was time to leave for Chicago to pursue a singing career. So what made you decide to go to Chicago? I had an aunt living in Chicago. Oh, okay, all right. <laughs> and that's the only reason mom and daddy let me go. Oh, uh-huh. okay. Well, Karen um, has always had a love for pop, rock, and traditional country music. Her debut album was Mississippi Stardust. Was that right? Yes. Okay. And as a musician, she has pounded out rock and roll, um, like Jerry Lee Lewis style, mm-hmm. and uh, the old ragtime favorites. Do you yeah. like ragtime? Yeah, yeah like, uh-huh. you know, a little Irvin Berlin in there. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, All right. Me. That's oh, great. That's, oh, great. Oh, that's great. So Karen sings many old favorites, but she also includes a few of her own compositions, such as Wedding Vows, a song she wrote for Marty on their wedding day. One of Karen's singles entitled I Can't Laugh was a Cashbox Pick of the Week selection in 1994. Miss Blackwell met Marty Allen in the mid-'80s, and the two began performing together, combining Karen's music and Marty's comedy. So, Jan? Well, Karen, you know, we love you to death, and uh, I got some of your CDs, and they are so passionate and warm, and I I love it. What else have you got going on? Well, at the moment, I'm doing something that is really, like, coming right from my gut, if if you will excuse the expression. I wrote a song called Seasons. Okay. And it's about my life, basically. Uh, And Marty kept bugging me to do it again. Um, so what I'm doing is just last week, I filmed a little girl as the little Karen. Okay. Uh My niece was in town. I filmed her as a young adult Karen. Uh Uh-huh. And then I went in and I filmed this old lady (laughs) 
the girl today. <laughs> and uh, the song is Seasons, and it's uh, going to be pretty nice. Oh, well, that sounds great. Yeah. Yeah. You know, about starting out, and we look for things our whole life when all along it was always within us. Yeah, it's always there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Oh, that sounds wonderful. Well, our next guest is Brenna Daly and Ryan Popalser. Brenna is an aspiring comedic actress and Ryan a comedian and radio host in his college town of Chicago, uh, where he guest on, you were both guests on my show, The Next Big Star, about five years ago. And um, you, at that time, you were doing a short called Unintended, I remember, and you were on there with uh, Kathleen Shin. Um, and it was a story about a bad decision and the past that you used to go on. They go awry. <laughs> and the movie was produced by Brenda Daly, which is your mother. And you were both leads in that one, I believe. Is that correct? Yes. All right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Crazy that it was five years. It doesn't seem like I can't that believe long. it. Time goes by so fast. <laughs> Actually, Marty, I met you at the studio about that, that time, five years ago. You were going, I'm going out of my show, and someone else, you're going into the studio for someone else's show. That was our brief encounter. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I knew. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, let me tell you. You all. haven't changed. Not a bit. Not a bit. <laughs> let me. <laughs> let Why me. are we reading this? Ah, uh, because we're, we script this show. <laughs> <laughs> that, that way we don't leave anything out. Yeah, we want to make sure we have everything like about you. It. We leave nothing to chance. <laughs> Brenna Daly grew up in Las Vegas, Nevada, and started acting about the age of eight. Her training consisted of improvisation, acting, singing, and dancing classes after school until she was 14. At that time, she at the uh, at that time she attended the Las Vegas uh, Academy of Performing Arts as a te- as a theater major. Her training then proceeded to revolve mostly around acting and musical theater classes. She completed all four years of the Performing Arts High School and then moved west to L.A. to experience a life-changing three years at the American Academy of Dramatic Arts. Brenna continues to grow as an artist and particularly as a a uh, comedic actress. And I'm just so thrilled to have you sitting right here next to oh, me, child. Oh, the thing. Oh, this is wonderful. Well, Ryan Popalser was born and raised in Las Vegas, Nevada. Ryan was bitten by the acting bug by the age of 15. He gave up his first love of baseball at the age of 16, and after 12 years of playing competitively in order to pursue an acting and stand-up comedy full-time, he gave it all up. He moved to Los Angeles in August of 2013 and has since relocated to Chicago to earn a college degree. Ryan has written several screenplays in the past in his past time while performing stand-up comedy in L.A., Las Vegas, and Chicago. His inspiration to become an actor was Michael J. Fox. He is also a radio host and DJ on WCGR Radio Network in Chicago. Wow. First, Brenna, why acting and particularly why comedy? All right, so I've been thinking about this answer, so it might be a little bit long. <laughs> oh, okay. So um, acting to me is celebrating uh, the human experience. And um, different genres are simply just taking a particular situation and looking at it from different perspectives. And so that's why I'm in love with comedy, because (laughs) it's definitely a perspective that I get behind. Uh, My plans for the future are just to continue to create and tell stories in my everyday life. (laughs) I will continue to find the fun. (laughs) We have our own thing going on here. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, oh, did I say something? No, they're really looking at you. (laughs) Um, yeah, so I'll just continue to, you know, find the truth and the funny and things in my everyday life and um, just not take everything so seriously. <laughs> okay. And yeah. Ryan, why comedy for you? What caused that? Well, comedy kind of happened on accident for me. I kind of stumbled upon an open mic uh, on my campus when I went to school in California. And I just decided to do it. I've never done stand-up before, but it was on campus. It was convenient, so I just... I just signed up and I did it. And uh, when I was there, somebody was telling me about a college comedy contest that was happening in Burbank. They told me I should join. And I just joined that too. And uh, I actually made it to the finals. I, I didn't win, but that turned into kind of a regular gig for me at this place called Flappers Comedy Club in Burbank. So before I knew it, I was I had like a full-time gig. It was, it was kind of bizarre, but uh, I really just fell in love with it. You know, being on stage with the mic and having the spotlight on you and just everyone engaged in what you're saying and generating laughs. I mean, you really can't get that anywhere else than, than stand-up. So I'm glad I found it, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, Marty, I'm just curious. When you started out, you just did stand-up comedy on your own? Uh, actually, 
I was a uh, jitterbug champion. Yeah, <laughs> I know I that. All yeah. kind of dance contests. Yeah. While I was in high school. Uh huh. And I, I, I somehow I, I had the feeling that I wanted to be in show business and be a comedian. So when when I got out of school, I I went to an agent, and he said, "Well, there isn't too many jobs. If you can get me a job for you for yourself, I'll book you." So wow! I thought that was how it was done. <laughs> that easy, huh? <laughs> so I went into this neighborhood into different bars and saloons and ever, And I went up to a guy, I asked him, have you ever had comedy? He said, no, I just have a piano player. I said, well, how about like a Saturday, a Friday, Saturday, and I do comedy? And he says, okay. And I said, how much? I, I think it was, what? $12. Wow. You told me it was twelve fifty. Twelve fifty. Fifty cents so was a I, lot back then. So I went back to the agent and I told him I got a job uh -huh. and I get twelve fifty. <laughs> the cigar fell out of his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't believe it. And I worked it. And the punchline to the whole thing is he took his commission. Uh, uh, how much was his commission? Percent. Five percent, ten or ten percent. So he got a dollar, dollar fifty. <laughs> All right. Wow. All right. Or dollar twenty-five actually. Dollar twenty-five. I played all kind of banquets, weddings, bar mitzvahs, uh, club dates, everything, and I built myself up, and my name got around. Yeah. And finally, I uh, landed with a, an agency in in those days. The the singers were the big deal. Yeah. Sinatra, Frankie Lane, yeah. Patty Page, Joe mm -hmm. Stafford, and they used they used comedians for twenty five minutes to open the show. Uh huh. So they had me, and they put me with different ones. And then when I got uh, a job, uh, he said, I'm booking you with a big girl singer. So I said, really? Who is it? And he said, Sarah Vaughn. Wow. Oh. Yeah. So yeah, she I, was a legend. Sarah who? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? Did you say Sarah who? <laughs> uh, Sarah In my Vaughn. head. I knew who she was because I had all singing and yeah. uh, she took a liking to me and called her friend and arranged for me to be on his show yeah and it was Nat King Cole that had to be an how, honor yeah and that's how I got with Nat King Cole and then Nat King Cole he introduced you in 1957 to Steve well, Rossi Steve Rossi was a production singer yeah at the Sands Hotel oh, my here in Las Vegas. Yeah. And he said to Nat, I'm tired of being a production singer, working with all these girls. So, <laughs> oh, poor thing. So I knew how stupid he was. As the <laughs> he figured uh, he's the perfect one yeah. to pair up with. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, Nat says, well, I have a comedian, and I got a great idea. Uh... Comedy teams would be great. You and this fellow, Marty Allen. Have you seen him? He said, yeah, I saw him here uh, working with you. He's funny, naturally. Mm -hmm. He said, would he be interested? He said, well, he's in Chicago at the Shea Paris with... Uh, Edie Gourmet. Edith, oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Edie Gourmet, and he called me up and he started to talk to me about being a comedy team, and I'm making a couple of bucks, and I says, I don't want to be a, a part of a team. I'm finally making it. <laughs> and he kept talking, and he says, well, 
couldn't we talk about this? Uh, I said, well, fly to Chicago. Did he? I figured uh, that would... Next thing I know, he comes to Chicago. Handsome guy, sings phenomenal. And we, we hit it off. And he said, would you be interested? Because that thinks, because of Martin and Lewis. Right. That there's always room for another one. I said, well, I don't know. I'll tell you what, I'll write some material and we'll do it. And let's see the reaction. So we start playing little clubs and... I could tell from the reaction of the people how they reacted to us. I said, maybe we have something. Yeah. And when we were ready, we called Nat, and he booked us together, and we scored unbelievable, and yeah. that was the beginning. Yeah. Do Are there too many people doing that today where they pair up? I don't know of too no, many. No. No. Yeah, pretty much everyone's on their own. I don't even know if there is a team yeah. anymore. Yes, there is. Is there? Yeah. It's called Allen and Blackwell. <laughs> yeah. Well, wait a minute. Boy, he has a short wait. memory, doesn't yeah. he? Well, no. <laughs> She's sitting right here. <laughs> when I heard Karen sing yeah. and play the piano, she's brilliant. Yeah. And next thing I know, she knew all of my... Routines? Routines. And so we put it in, uh, Steve and I split, but very friendly. Mm -hmm. He wanted to be an agent, and I wanted to continue in show business. We did movies, we did tele we did all the big shows, from Perry Como to... Uh, you did 44 Ed Sullivan's. Yeah. Yeah. We did more Ed Sullivan shows. Than Ed Sullivan. Brenda's sitting there going, who's Ed Who? Sullivan? What? <laughs> I love uh, this. I love it. It's so cute. And, and today... Welcome to History 101. <laughs> I'm, I'm today, learning. I'm taking notes. Today, the act is phenomenal. You know why it was so easy? And honey, we need to let other people talk. No, no, no. This is fine. No. But I want to tell you why it was so easy. They, he and Steve got back together for a short time. Yeah. And we were actually appearing at what is now known as the stratosphere. Yeah. And every friggin' night, Steve would say, what do I say here? And I'd say, you ask him this, this, and this. Or Marty would say to me, what do I answer? So one time Steve had to go away for something. Ah. And I said, I know the show, Marty. Let's just do it. <laughs> so we just did So she it. filled in for Steve. <laughs> and then what's so ironic was uh, Mr. Stupak called me in the office. He said, I heard the show was sensational. You want to keep it that way? I said, no. We started with Steve. We're going to finish here with Steve, you know? Yeah. And we did. Yeah. Steve I knew Mr. Stupak as no, well. Steve wanted did to you? be yeah. an agent. Yeah. And we parted very friendly. We were friendly the whole time. Yeah. And uh, he, he was a great straight man. Yeah. But... He was uh, funny too, though. Uh, yeah, yeah, funny. Off camera. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, off, uh, but the answer is uh, Karen is unbelievable. Yeah. You know why he likes working with me? <laughs> why? <laughs> because he knows I'm going to keep him straight. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Steve didn't always remember everything, he'd have it written in his hands. It's yeah. done sweating and then it'd run. And, <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I was going to ask you did you write everything or did, yeah. did it just happen on stage? Uh, I don't, I don't follow anything. If she says something to me, many times I change it. Okay. And, and she has no idea it's going to happen. And yeah. why do you change it, Marty? Because I forgot the original. <laughs> so it was written. You just forgot it. <laughs> and that's how, we, that's how the act I works. I think some of the best things, though, James, really do happen. But just on stage. You never know what's going to happen no. or why it's going to happen. That's yeah. And you know, I, I originally moved here in 1978. So there is no doubt that some of our paths cross with some of the people that we all know. Yeah. So it's kind of interesting that we're here sitting here talking. We'll talk after the show. Can we gossip? So. <laughs>
No. <laughs> There's some things we can't talk about. Oh, not on air. Oh, oh dear. dear. <laughs> but you started out, you were actually in the war. You were in World War II. I was in the 15th Air Force. Mm-hmm. And you won a medal. Yes. Yeah. Uh, that was pretty heroic. Come on. Well, now. I was on guard duty and also on refueling. Yeah. I had a perforated eardrum. In fact, they had no idea that I would be accepted, but they accepted me. Okay. And I, I trained in St. Petersburg, and then they transferred me to the 15th Air Force, and we were stationed in Cerenola, Italy. We were the ones with the B-24s. We were the ones who bombed Palesti oil fields okay. and blew up their uh, oil reserve, yeah. and we got a presidential citation. Well, you actually got a citation because one of the tankers well, caught fire, what happened, or the planes the, in the, the bay. The gasoline truck, when they put the gas in the, in the plane, uh-huh. is 4,000 4, gallons of gasoline, yeah. and there's a motor in the back of the truck. And you turn the motor on, and the gasoline goes up, and the two guys up on the wing put the gasoline in. Uh huh. Well, they were putting the gasoline in, and the motor caught on fire. Uh-huh. Well, the two guys jumped off the plane. Uh-huh. They were on their way to the Vatican. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, everybody ran. And I don't know whatever made me do it, but I pulled the hose. They uh, had just let the hose. They left everything on, there on the wing. Yeah. I pulled the hose down, got it in the truck, and pulled it away, and came back, and with a leather jacket, more or less, got the fire out on the motor. Then I went in the airplane uh-huh. that was loaded with bombs uh-huh. and made sure there were no sparks. And that's why you did it, because you knew if those bombs went off, it yeah. would be retroactive yes. with all the planes that were You're next right. to it. Yeah. And and next thing I know, they came with the hoses. Uh-huh. And Putting start, you out. <laughs> they did. They start pouring the snow on me. Oh, wow. They didn't know what a, who, who I was. I couldn't right. been anybody. And then when they investigated and found what I had done, uh-huh. Uh, they had a parade. Yeah, and, you got a uh, yeah. And I got a medal. You got the Soldier Medal of Valor. Wow. I yeah. got a Soldier's Medal. Yeah, absolutely. That's extraordinary. That, that is an extraordinary. interesting story. Yeah. I mean, I'm glad you, you talked about it. So, and Jane, did you have something you wanted to ask Marty? Well, if I did, I sure don't remember what it is now because he has just had me in stitches. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I do. Remember. This is a good one. This yeah. is good. After the war, to generate an income, Marty had a novel idea. He became the first door-to-door dance salesman. (laughs) I love this idea. I I don't know of anyone who's ever done that. Well, well, I had to make extra money when I came out to California. Okay. This is before the comedy career. Oh, yeah, Yeah, before everything. Yeah. And being a dancer and knowing all the different dances... I got the idea of becoming the first door-to-door dance salesman, and I knock on the door, and the woman came out, yes, and I tell her I'm a dance instructor. <laughs> <laughs> Clever. I'm not selling anything, but dancing. Uh-huh. And she looked at me, and maybe one out of three would say yes. Next thing I know, I had. Quite a few number of women. And you were pretty and cute, I was too. teaching tango <laughs> and rumba. And right there at their home. Huh? Right there at the house. At right their home. At the house. Yeah, yeah. And so you were a door-to-door dance salesman. I'm a door-to-door dance salesman. And it says $10 an hour is what you charged. A half hour. Yeah, or half hour. I, half, I, half I hour. didn't know. Half hour. That's I, a lot back then. Yeah, well, back then. Oh, my then, goodness. You sure it wasn't a dollar. I had no idea. <laughs> I figured $5, $10. Yeah. I, I knew I would never go over because I wouldn't get any customers. Yeah. So when I told them $5 or $10, they said, okay. 
and a half hour, I would yeah. teach them dance. But Jan practice. wants to say something. Go I I, I think this is just so great. I would give anything if somebody knock on my door. <laughs> I'd give them ten dollars dance. Ryan, money. they're giving you ideas. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there you go. <laughs> somebody said, "When did you quit doing it?" I said, "I was teaching a woman how to do the samba, and her husband came home." <laughs> <laughs> and that ended that career. And he couldn't hear the music. He was deaf. <laughs> it just. But Jan, I love what you were going to say. That why why did you think he quit? I have no idea why he quit. Well, you said because it was costing him a fortune. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that's right. In yeah. shoes, okay. it cost you so much money in shoes and foot powder. <laughs> 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 well, one of the things that we haven't talked about is is you were actually a serious actor as well. You yeah. on the Big Valley? I did Big Valley yeah. with Barbara Stanwyck. Oh, that had to be great. Uh, I and Linda won, Evans. I got an award for it, and, and Barbara said, uh, called me in her dressing room and said her and Linda Evans got to tell me how wonderful I was as the Jonah. I played the part of the Jonah. Do you know what the Jonah is? No. He's the guy on the ranch. Oh, when the rains come and the cattle run away oh, okay. and everything, they said it's his fault because he's, he's a bad luck guy. Yeah. He's a Jonah. <laughs> okay. You were Waldo Diefendorfer. I was Waldo <laughs> Diefendorfer. I yeah. can't even and say the, that. And the crew <laughs> on, the, on the ranch wanted me to, get a, to leave. And Barbara and Linda protected and said there's no such thing. And he is not a Jonah. And that's how it was. Wow. And I rode a donkey. Wow, yeah. Yes. I actually remember you from the Big Valley. I really do. I watched every episode of the Big Valley yeah. growing up. Yeah. Did, you, did yeah. you see it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you know there's one movie, I don't know why you weren't in it, but in my mind, you were in it. And that was, it was a mad, 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 mad world. Yeah. For some reason, your character would have fit in there so yeah. well. And there were so many comedians in that movie. Yeah. I know Everybody people. Everybody tells me that. Yeah. But I always think, in my mind, I still see you in that movie, and you were never in that movie. No. <laughs> no, we made a movie. Brenda's going, to, she's got another, like, what? <laughs> what movie? <laughs> no, uh, Steve and I did Last of the Secret Agents. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's, uh, and then I did Big Valley. Mm hmm. And uh, I, I did. Uh, a, a number of... Uh, you were on Broadway and I had a ball. Yeah. Yeah, so people don't know that about you either. You were on Broadway. <laughs> you know, I mean, you've done it all. You really have. So. Uh, I, I don't want... I'm not one of those guys, to be honest mm -hmm. with you, that walks around and says, I did this, I did that. I just go out and do it. But and you had I fun with it. it. You had fun with it, though. I've had a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. And right now, working with Karen, this is the greatest of all. It has to be. I mean, yeah. you're working with your, your wife. She's yeah. your partner. Not only is she great, but then she goes home and makes dinner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I was about to say, you better talk. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not careful, you won't get dinner tonight. <laughs> Well, your tour is called, well, you were in, I, I want to bring this up because we didn't talk about this. I didn't put it in our script. Everyone knows we script this show. You wrote a book called Hello Dare, yeah. which was part of your act, which you actually created when you did the, the military yeah. tours. You did hospital tours for the military. And tell people how Hello Dare, first of all, came about. Uh, it was a slang that they were using at one of the places where you were performing, and they couldn't say there. Because I think it was a Hispanic... No, I, no, I, I, no, that happened in Philadelphia. Oh, okay. Steve asked me a question, and I blanked out. And I looked at him, and I went, hello there. Uh. And he says, what? <laughs> oh, okay. I said, hello there. And I heard the audience laughing and people yelling out, hello there. <laughs> and next thing I know, I said, you wait all your life. To find, right. like, Joe Penner, want to buy a duck or whatever. Right, right, right. 
And that became and your... And became your, your, my, my opener. Yeah. Hello yeah. there. And, and your, I spelled it D-E-R-E. E-R-E. And that became your whole routine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you wrote a book called Hello Dare, and it's basically a picture book. There's 160 photographs in there. Yeah. And, Karen, I haven't seen the book, but are you in that book as well? I hope you are. A couple of pages. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, Marty. Come <laughs> on. <laughs> well, I'm in it a lot. Yeah. But okay. I, I tried to make sure that uh, he covered everything. Yeah. He, yeah. he, he was kind of... It was hard to get it out of him. You, you see how he's talking right now? Yeah. So I go get a recorder, and I'm being you, and I'm asking him questions. He couldn't remember one friggin' answer. <laughs> <laughs> he's remembering now. Well, that's it. He's in front of, you know, people, and there's an audience out there, and, and there's a camera. Yeah. He can remember everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? He's on. He's on now. <laughs> well, maybe you should put cameras around the house. Oh, there well, you go. I, oh, good idea. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There's the answer. <laughs> uh, well, we, let me add with this. In 1968, he made Hello, Dear, tour of military hospitals in the United States, a tour named after a catchphrase he popularized. What was that like, Marty? What? The tour the for tour the, the, for the military, military hospitals. Uh, I got involved when the Vietnam War was over and the guys came and I was asked to make an appearance. And uh-huh. I went, I didn't go to do a show. I went bed to bed. Uh. And they knew me because everybody had seen me on television. Right. I'd walk over to the bed and go, hello there. Ah, and yeah. And next thing I know, they start laughing. I tell them a couple of jokes and go on to another. So you actually went bed to bed with this routine. Yes. This wasn't like on stage. No, and I oh, got that's a so le- nice. letter. Well, let's not talk about that, but tell them about the guy that had just gotten the artificial leg. Oh, yeah. I love this I story. I went bed to bed, and then I they took me around. And they took me in the amputee session. Uh-huh. And there was a guy being fitted for uh, a leg. Mm-hmm. And I, I said, said, how's it going, soldier? He says, well, it doesn't look real. I says, well, what did you say? He says, it doesn't look real. I said, just a moment. And I said, can you get me a pair of scissors? And they said, yeah. They got me scissors. I had the wild hair. (laughs) And I came with scotch tape and cut my hair and put it on his leg. (laughs) (laughs) Now that's more. Wow. (laughs) (laughs) Another sweet story. (laughs) That is, that's amazing. That That is is amazing. (laughs) I'm just curious, Brenda, do you have anything to ask Mr. Um, I mean, just the, Party just so much knowledge and life, and I, I don't have any questions. Yeah. Just, but can I say something? You said finding the fun in every day. Yes. And that's what Marty does. We get two or three newspapers delivered because he doesn't like going on the Internet. Yeah. But he just looks for what's going on in the news. Yeah. yeah. And then to turn it into something funny. Yeah, that's wow. a that's something that um, I'm with us. Uh, I, uh, I, I have never done anything risque. I said, you don't need it. All you have to do is take the front page and make it the funny page. Yeah, yeah, that's and true. And that's the way I circle different mm-hmm. things. Well, and that's what I was going to ask you when it comes to writing comedy. Though I was going to ask you, where do you get your inspiration for what you write? So you just pick up the newspaper and it's right there. Well, I, I I can see something in the front page or in the back page, and I circle it or cut it out and work on it in such a way that I can use it in the act. That's how I operate. And I never, never did any dirty or risque on stage but on, on, <laughs> on stage. yeah i've heard him off stage <laughs> when he was at the other studio mm-hmm. yeah. yep it's real embarrassing <laughs> i go marty honey 
Don't. There's ladies here. Oh, excuse me. And then he gets you guys <laughs> off in the corner. I have. I'm going to ask Ryan. Ryan, do you have anything you'd like to ask Karen or Marty? Oh gosh, I don't know. I mean, just absorbing all the information. It sounds like it's quite a life. Uh, I guess. Uh, well, what's the highlight for Marty? He's yeah. done so much. I mean, is there one moment that stands out above the others? What's the one moment that stands out above everything else that you've done? No. Yes, there is. What? Come. If you don't remember it, <laughs> you sure told me enough times. Okay. What was it? <laughs> 1964. Ed Sullivan. Oh. Now that stands out. What was what went on there? Oh. Well, uh, uh, he he told Steve and I. We're going to be on a show with an act from England. And I says, uh, an act from England? An act from England? What act from England? And I thought it was that real funny guy. Benny Hill. Oh, Benny Hill, yeah, yeah. Benny Hill, who I thought was phenomenal. He was so funny, yeah. He was one of the great comics. Yeah, yeah he was, yeah. Uh, he said, the Beatles are coming. You're going to be on with the Beatles. Can you <laughs> that would be amazing. Beatles. She knows the Beatles. <laughs> when you said Benny Hill, she was like, huh? Who's Benny Hill? But now, when you said the Beatles, she knew who that was. And one of the funniest things was they were re rehearsing, getting ready, and I walked in. They didn't know who I was. They see this guy with the wild hair. Uh -huh. And I walk over to John Lennon, and I said, John... He said, yes. I said, a lot of people mistake me for you. <laughs> he almost collapsed. He collapsed. <laughs> that would be a highlight. That would I think be that's a, a real highlight. But they were, they were terrific, and they were very nice. Yeah. yeah. I think another thing, uh -huh. because I, you know, was performing for uh, Princess Margaret. Oh. oh, wow. Uh, Queen Elizabeth's oh, sister. Yeah. I was, uh, we were in England appearing in the club. Uh, he had seen us at the Concord Hotel in the Catskills. Uh -huh. And he told the, the owner of a club in England that was staying there that he should book Steve and I. And he took a chance, and we did terrific and we were there a couple of weeks, and he said, I'm holding you over for a star, and you'll open for her. And I said, who is it? And it was Shirley Bassey. Oh, my goodness. Well, I, Another Brenna look like who? <laughs> Shirley Bassey is one of the greatest. Great uh, singer. Oh, go singer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, yeah. you don't remember that movie either. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Double and, seven. And, and that was beautiful. Steven, uh, do you get the feeling we're all old or something? <laughs> you know what? I think it is absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. Seeing this young face. Yeah. Who loves comedy? Who loves acting? Yeah. And to see you beginning all of this, and then Aww. you're sitting next to a 95 I and know. a half year old. And I don't think there's too many things you didn't get to do, did you? No, I was going to tell him. One night, her biggest fan was Princess Margaret. Oh, okay. And she came in with a group. And Steve and I did a routine about being up in the... Uh, astronaut. Astronaut. And I wore a helmet. Uh -huh. And Steve said, Marty, what do you see up there? I said, a sign. What does the sign say? Go home, Yank. <laughs> well, Margaret fell on the floor. When I said go home, Yank, yeah. she collapsed. Oh. And uh, <laughs> after the show, uh, we went over, we bowed, and she told us how much she enjoyed us. Oh, that's great. And I sent her our, our CD. And she, it and was an album then. Thank you. <laughs> we to thank you from the palace. Yeah, well, that's I'll great. Bet. Wow, that's yeah. an honor. But to work with Shirley Bassey. Oh my gosh, you've and worked what with the was best. the other big song before? Uh, the moment you walked in the, the joint. Oh. Never oh. mind. Yeah. yeah, who was that? Well, she had a big hit on yeah, Big yeah. Spender. Oh, yeah, yeah, Big Spender, mm -hmm. that's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah.
Didn't I tell you that Karen is just ah? Oh. I know. You know, I used I I when I was growing up, we had cassette tapes. <laughs> so it's a little bit different era than the albums. Before eight tracks. Well, yeah, after we had eight tracks. tracks I mean, yeah, eight tracks, tracks were on the way out when I was growing up. That was past where, eight. Where they were kind of pitiful. I lived in the Midwest. I grew up in Missouri and Oklahoma, mainly in Oklahoma. Where? Around Bartlesville. Oh, really? Yeah. I had a house outside of uh, a little place called Tahlequah. Oh, my gosh. I have a nephew who lives there now. <laughs> really? Yeah. A beautiful place. Should Tahlequah I is leave <laughs> Talk about your house. Well, <laughs> no, it, was, it was a haven. I mean, everybody came there, you know, to relax because heck, it was on a dirt road. And you know what people don't know about that little town? I mean, we're really getting off subject here now. Is that is where the Trail of Tears ended? Mm-hmm. And if you don't know what that is, we might want to look it up. But the Trail of Tears was about the Indians that they put together and herded them off to Oklahoma. Oklahoma was actually settled. This is a history lesson. Oklahoma was actually settled as a, a gigantic Indian reservation. There were seven Indian nations. And they took all the Indians from the East Coast and the South, and they herded them like cattle to Oklahoma to settle mm-hmm. there. Uh, um, well, 80, at the time I lived there, 80% of Tahlequah was Cherokee. Indian. Yeah, that's being Wow. <laughs> now, I'm Choctaw. Oh, okay. Interesting. No, no my great-grandmother was full-bloody Choctaw. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I remember when Custer was attacked by the Indians. He says, how can we get out of this? He said, let's go to Oklahoma. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. Well, well, he's a little older then. Yeah. Well, there we go. <laughs> well, anyway, um, Ryan, what, what, is there anything that you would, what advice would you like Marty to give you? What advice would I like yeah, Marty to give me? To, uh, yeah. What, what do you think he can give you some good advice on? Um, I guess just how to take it to the next step. You know, I do a lot of, you know, open mics and on-campus stuff and, small gigs like that, but I guess any advice to, to get to that next step in the so, stand-up world? The answer is, all you have to do is what you think is funny, and just work it into your act. Don't, you uh-huh. don't have to take it from anybody else. Just look in the papers or pick out certain things and put humor to it and walk out and do it. And you're saying keep it clean. And There's no need to clean. get it. Yeah, yeah. When you're funny, you're just uh, funny. And, yeah. And if yeah. you're funny, you're funny. Yeah. I say. Uh, right. That's the answer. Okay. I say perform every chance you get. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't matter if there's one right. or three yeah. people. If there's, if there's five people or 500, go out and do the same show for each one. And and Definitely. just do your whole act, and and that's how you are able to uh, maintain your your comedy. And then and I say, I say that when you're ready, that you should go online and send a short uh, video to America's Got Talent. There you go, Ryan. Yes. I would I would really that's make that nothing. a priority. Well, you know, they yeah. just this season yeah. they had that one comedian on who went pretty far. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought. Yeah, he was he the had final. A good chance. Yeah, yeah. That's a uh, work toward the, that kind of a show. You could get lucky. Yeah, yeah. Right. There's yeah, no, there's a lot of options now. Nothing like television exposure. No, and I'm just curious, Marty. Right. When you were coming up, did was there any comedians that influenced your life, like? Was there anyone that you aspired to be like or thought, you you know, you liked their routines? Well, uh, I ha- I've i had favorites, I would say. Okay. If you were to ask me who was funny in my, I'd say Don Rickles. Oh, my God, yeah. yeah, yeah. Buddy Hackett. That's my favorite. Yeah, 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 yeah. Guy from England. Yeah, and he was in a, It's a Mad, Mad, Mad World, which is yeah. why I probably always see you, even though it was Buddy Hackett. Yeah. yeah. These are the kind of guys that are funny. Yeah. Karen and I used to go to see Rickles just to watch him. We knew what he was going to say and do. 
and we would get hysterical yeah. because we knew. He liked to poke fun at the audience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you remember the Taneers, the Taneer brothers? Oh, yeah, the dancers. Okay. Well, I they were singers. They had a really nice I singing they were routine. Singers. Yeah, they were singers. They used to have a routine. Buddy Hack, I mean, Don Rickles reminds me of them. They used to have a song in the routine like, You Don't Know Me. And what they would do is they, they would set someone up who, let's say you they went to a casino and they were gambling and, and they'd get to know the dealer over a period of time and they'd say, You want to come see our show? So then they, the person, of, all, of course, would say, Yeah, I'll go see your show. So I went with a friend who was a dealer and literally that's what happened. Well, they bait you because you go in there and you think you know him because you've known him a few years, you know, from coming in and playing. And they had that song, You Think You Know Me, <laughs> But You Don't. And it is so hysterical because they put the spotlight on the person <laughs> who, they, who thinks they know them, but in reality, they just know him from the casino. Yeah. And it's such a, and you, that person's so embarrassed. I, I shouldn't be laughing at that, but I was there with a good friend and I thought it was hysterical. That person was mad. I thought it was funny. But Don Rickles <laughs> reminds me of that, you know. He, he'd pick you out of the audience and. <laughs> But well, I Trenier, actually. Trainers were phenomenal. Yeah, they really were. Great actors. Yeah, act. yeah, they really were. They, they were really nice people too. I, I work with a uh, uh, young man. At, oh, to you, honey. He's in his fifties. <laughs> <laughs> She's surrounded by old people right now. <laughs> uh, but he he uh, he said that years ago he deliberately tipped big to get right up close for Don's show and wore the loudest, most obnoxious tie. Oh, so he wanted to be part he of it. He wanted to be picked on. <laughs> uh -huh. he, he yeah. went, and so I think a lot of people do. Yeah, well, this person I was with didn't. Uh. <laughs> and that's what made it even funnier, because you could see them, their face, but they were embarrassed, and it's like, and they're, you could see him getting mad, and I'm just cracking up like you wouldn't believe, and that even made him person even matter. But anyway, you know, Don was good. I, I really thought that, that was, there was nothing wrong with that. Everyone has to understand that kind of, Time of comedy well, is there just in jest. another guy, Jackie Leonard. Mm -hmm. Who? He was, <laughs> no, he was, That's Brenna's line. <laughs> he was before Don Rickles. Yeah. And he's the first one I met when I came uh, to New York. And he was very kind. And he called me out of the audience to come up. He said, you're going to like this guy. And that's how... I went up and just started doing my own routine. But he did the same thing to Rickles. I have to ask you, because you've had a, such a long career, who, who was – you know how sometimes we'll meet someone and it's like, I can't believe I'm meeting this person. Who in your life was it ever like that with for you? Like, I can't believe I've actually met this person. Who? Where did you get the name Alan? Oh, Fred <laughs> Allen. Really? Yeah. Who was that? I don't know well, who that see, is. She wouldn't know who he was. You yeah. Know. Well, I, I researched you. <laughs> no. I know time, your real last name. <laughs> the Fred Allen show was a big hit. Yeah. And I used to listen to him and his wife, Portland. Was that her name? I think, I think it was so, Portland. yeah. Portland. And they, they did, they would go talk to different people, and mm -hmm. they were all characters. And the way Fred would answer them, I thought was hysterical. And when I, my name originally is Marty Alpern. Right. Right? Morton. Uh, Morton. Morton Alpern. Morton Alpern, yeah. <laughs> so I just took Marty and then took Fred Allen and made it Marty Alpern. Why did you decide to change your name? I'm just curious. Why? Uh-huh. Well, Morton Alpern is not phonetically funny. <laughs> it is it today. It is when you just... No, uh, <laughs> it no, is today. Uh, uh, show business. Yeah. You try to find something that fits in. Yeah. So Marty Allen fit. You know what's funny? And it's not funny to me. <laughs> okay. okay. He can't, his social security and everything reads marty allen uh -huh. but because i'm legally married to that dude uh -huh. they make me use alpern oh really, really? that's really strange uh -huh. i can't file taxes or anything and i go 
But she doesn't make any money. <laughs> it's Karen yeah. on Kate Blackwell. Then. I thought you were part of the routine. What do you mean you don't make any money? <laughs> no, <laughs> What's I, going on here, Marty? <laughs> no, I said that to the to the people at Social Security uh-huh. when they made me come in and change everything. Yeah. And wow. I said, but she doesn't make any money. <laughs> We don't let her work. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> but that's, so anytime I walk into any place where I have an appointment, I go, who am I today? Am uh, yeah. I Blackwell, Allen, or Alpern? Right. The yeah. back of my passport actually reads person also known as. Yeah. Oh, my God. And I'm just curious. I'm going to ask you when it comes to, to, to singing, who was your great influences? Well, I was quite young, and I went to visit the aunt and uncle in Chicago. Uh-huh. And they bought tickets for the Playboy Jazz Festival. Okay. And Ella Fitzgerald and Louis Armstrong were the headliners. Okay. And I thought I had died and gone to heaven when I heard her sing. Yeah. Now, yeah. I don't sing that way at all, but she's still one of my absolute all-time favorites. So she singers. was an influence then. Oh, my Lord. Yeah. 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 Just loved her. Yeah. You know. I worked with Ella. Yeah. I worked with Joe Stafford, Patty Page. Oh, my goodness. Shirley Bassey. You said all of that. He's showing off now. That's where where And Karen Blackwell. And Karen Blackwell, yeah. Do you know Karen Blackwell? (laughs) (laughs) Why don't you think so? No, Marty. (laughs) Ad lib. (laughs) You know, Marty, uh, I got to say, this is what's funny, is Marty and I were on Merv Griffin. You know who Merv Griffin now. Do you know who Merv? I Come on, Brenna. I know. Oh gosh. Oh my so God. I hardly know anything in life. <laughs> Your mother kept you sheltered. <laughs> we, uh, ju- we just got her out of the box I know, this week. Uh, Carol Burnett. Oh yeah. Okay, well, yeah, yeah. That might be a shock. <laughs> you did? Yeah. Well, that's oh, yeah. actually. I was on tour with her. What about Lucille Ball? I know her. Did no. you work with Lucille I didn't Ball? I work with her. <laughs> you didn't work with her, did you, Lucille? Lucille Ball. But, Lucille Ball, no. no but, I knew Lucille yeah, Ball I know. Yeah. very well. Well, yeah, I met her lots of times it's with Carol her. Burnett I worked with. Yeah. Well, actually, I was appearing. I was so friggin' young, uh, which was <laughs> I wonderful. thought you still were. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I know it more than Brenna knows. <laughs> uh, but, but anyway, uh, I, I was very young, but I was appearing here in Vegas. Uh-huh. And I had a commercial that had just come out. Uh, they, oh, Seven Up decided to change their image, and the song was called Wet and Wild. Okay. That's when they first introduced it, and the bridge get went, wet and wild. <clears throat> seven Up, is, right? So uh-huh. I put it in my show. Well, my acting coach, because I thought, eh, one day I might need it, you know, so I'll study. She had taught Carol Burnett along with Rock Hudson and Tony Curtis oh and all those people from the studios. Yeah. So she was up watching Carol Burnett's show and brought Carol to see my show. So the next night, Carol invites me to her show, right? Uh-huh. Who do you think the opening act was? Alan and Rossi. Oh, my oh. goodness. Uh-huh. But when Carol, I didn't pay him any attention. He, I think oh, so you didn't know him then? No. no. Oh. No, yeah, we hadn't done the Merv Griffin show together yet. And I still, he was just very nice to me, but, you know, I was so shy. Believe it or not, I, I was shy. Um, <laughs> really? And, uh, but no, but, but in, anyway, uh, Carol introduced me from the audience and said it's so nice in a town that's kind of jaded to see a young entertainer, da, da, da. And she handed me a bottle of 7-Up from the stage. Uh-huh. I've never uh-huh. forgotten that. Oh. And, uh, but I remember just saying hello to you. And Steve. But wow. That, but that was all, you know. Did you remember yeah. that? No, she she wanted to see the singer. She said, <laughs> I wish that crazy guy would get off. Uh, oh, sure. <laughs> oh, okay. That's not a lie. <laughs> that's not a lie? <laughs> <laughs> that's not a lie. I mean, I went, why does he keep interrupting the singer? <laughs> because if you remember, 198 years ago... Uh, Brenna, it was so incredible. They had string sections. Yeah. And huge, beautiful orchestras. Yeah. So, of course, I wanted to hear the music because I wanted to really listen to the music, yeah. musicians playing. I remember <laughs> that we're reminiscing now. I remember when they used to have the orchestras before movies. 
Remember they had the old orchestra pits and they would play before a movie would come on? And then, oh, you yeah. do not remember. Oh, that. yes, I do. You know, in Atlanta, they had the old Fox Theater th that they renovated and they still do that occasionally. Really? Yeah, yeah, in Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah. How many musicians? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> or did they just do it for because it's... We're reminiscent of the old mm -hmm. times, especially if they'll go back and play some of the old movies like Gone with the Wind or whatever. They'll have that orchestra pit and they come up from the ground yeah. and the orchestra. It's really... Yeah, that's still in Atlanta. Yeah. Oh, my Lord, yeah. I want to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love Atlanta. Yeah. 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 yeah, I do too. I don't know a lot about it, but I like it. Well, I lived there 12 years. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I know a I, lot of You know, it. I'm from the South. You are? Yeah, I don't know. Wait, you're from Louisiana. No, right? Mississippi. Or Mississippi. I'm sorry, Mississippi. Yeah, we just said that. What am I talking about? <laughs> <laughs> that's, okay. that's where I, I Listen, my mind's no, going. You're, you're sharper than I am. That's where I heard. <laughs> that's where I heard. That. Okay. <laughs> See, there's a comedy line. <laughs> you know, and I feel like we're just leaving Ryan totally out. Ryan. <laughs> Ryan's taking yeah. a <laughs> Why Ryan, wake up, up. I'm here. Wake up in Chicago. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I, you well, know, wait. How's the weather oh, in Chicago? Uh, real quick. Huh? What's that? I just said, how's the oh, weather? No, no. Oh, the weather? Oh, it's great. It's, it's oh. actually not too cold, so that's nice. But uh, <laughs> since we're talking about all these names, I do want to ask. One of my idols is uh, Johnny Carson. So oh, do either of you yeah. have any stories or experiences about Johnny? Well, uh, Marty, we, there's not enough time for Marty to tell you a story that he told Johnny on the show one time that had Johnny on the floor. Uh, but it's in the book. <laughs> it's, a, it's in Hello There. Uh, I, I actually did the show a couple of times. He was so quiet yeah. and, uh, and so focused on what he was working on that he did not carry on conversations. Now, after you and I were married, um, he, we ran into him in the yeah. lobby, and he was very talkative. Yeah. But uh, not, not my, my, my favorite was Mike Douglas. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I like Mike, Mike Douglas, Douglas too. Yeah, they called me up. They had great things for me to do. Marty, come in. You're going to ride an elephant. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> you were the prop man. Well, I hate to do this. I mean, I can't believe this hour has gone. What? But we're down no. to the last few minutes of the show. Oh wow. I know. You'll oh, have to come goodness. back and do it again. So I would like to thank our guests, Brenna Daly, Ryan Popalser, Karen Kate Blackwell, and the legendary comedian Marty Allen, along with my co-host, Janet Corsi. And you can find a video of this show on YouTube.com at forward slash uh, AspectsOfWriting.com. Just go to AspectsOfWriting.com, and you can get all the links to iTunes, uh, Roku TV, we're everywhere. Uh, absolutely, and, and uh, Twitter and the whole nine yards. Oh, yeah. You, so you know, just scroll to the very yeah. bottom of the page and... Just go to Aspects of and Writing and... You, well, and actually there's a section in there where you just click on a link and it takes you to iTunes or iHeartRadio. Right. We're on iHeartRadio as well. Oh. Yeah. So, yeah. So just go there after the show and you'll be able to find everything. This is big time. This is... <laughs> yeah. I, do. I, I don't know if it's big time, but, You've you done. know, <laughs> yeah. we have fun. That's the main thing, is we have fun. You're in the big tent. And I want to thank you both so much for, for doing this, oh you know. Gosh. And you're, you're an inspiration to, I'm sure, Ryan, you would have to agree he's an inspiration. Brenna? Yes. Thank you for letting me. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, no, that, was, that was great. Ryan, we'll let you talk more next time. All okay, right. Yeah, in five years again, right? <laughs> no, no. We won't, we, won't, we, won't, we won't make you wait five years this time. All okay, right. perfect. Boy, in yeah. Five years, I'll be a hundred years old. <laughs> That's right. You'll have to come oh, back. Wow. There we go. I'll try to make it. <laughs> All right. You better hang on. <laughs> and, I, and I'll be there in person this time instead of on the All phone. Right. All right. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. <laughs> no, I can't. Uh, are I, you working? Oh, you, am I working? No, just I'm just focusing on school. I'm graduating well, in uh, a business degree, so. And, and you do a little radio show on the side. I do, I do, but that's yeah. I mean, that's on campus, and I actually counted as a as a course for yeah. me.
Yeah. Oh, that's like one credit course. So I don't really count that as working, but see, I'm just focusing on, on my degree right now. You do a lot of stand-up by yourself, huh? I do. I do. I, I actually haven't done a show in Chicago yet, but I'm trying. I'm, I'm in the process of that right now. Well, you got to play Las Vegas. I have, one time. But really? Yeah, I definitely want to more. Yeah. Oh, when are you coming? When are you going to be I back? When to Vegas? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I won't be back till December. Ah. December. Okay, I'll be right. out. I'll be out of town. <laughs> <laughs> so never mind. <laughs> That's hilarious. You're so bad. That was a bad okay. lead in. <laughs> oh, oh my God. God. Are you? How old are uh, you? I'm 22. 22. <laughs> Gee, right. we're, we're almost uh, unbelievable. <laughs> I'm 95. <laughs> Top that, Ryan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, hey, when you're 95, incredible. when you're 95, we'll have you back on the radio. <laughs> Marty, Mar Marty, honey, we're not on the radio right now, so save it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it'll be there. Trust me, I'll make sure it gets on. <laughs> yeah.